the Super Nintendo is probably going to go down as one of, if not, the greatest video game console of all time. Most people have it as either number one or number two as far as their favorite video game consoles growing up. It's home to some of the most legendary video games in all of history. Games such as Super Mario World, The Legend of Zelda, and Mega Man X are just some of the plethora of masterpieces housed within its library. But very seldomly, a game will be developed but never released due to things like the developer going out of business or being unable to secure the trademark to the rights of the game while it's in development. A good example of this is the 1994 film Baby's Day Out, which had a game created based on the movie but was canceled before it was released. This is the focus of today's game review. Let me introduce... Socks the Cat Rocks the Hill. A game based off of Socks the Cat, the then pet of former president Bill Clinton. Now, I was just a kid back in the early 90s, so I didn't realize how popular Socks the Cat was. A Muppet version of him was interviewed by Kermit the Frog on Larry King Live. He had a book published about him, and he was always visible whenever the former president was being filmed. So he looks like he's wearing socks. It happens that during a president's time in office, they will sometimes adopt a pet in order to be seen as more wholesome by American voters. Many presidents throughout history have owned pets that have gone on to be famous. Petty Roosevelt's dogs, Checkers the dog. Even Calvin Coolidge's wife owned a pet raccoon. Socks the Cat Rocks the Hill was created by Real Time Associates and was going to be published by Kaneko in 1993. Unfortunately, Kaneko, a Japanese publishing company, closed their US branch during this time, so the game was ultimately canceled. It's not really known where copies of Socks the Cat Rocks the Hill were stored, but some 25 years later, in 2018 to be exact, the ROM image was available, it was distri distributed to the masses via Kickstarter campaign. Now, I don't know how I feel about owning a game that was never released, but... I'm curious to see what could have been. So, the story goes, some spies break into a U.S. Embassy and steal a portable nuclear missile launch unit and unknowingly kidnapped a sleeping Sox. Sox wakes up from his catnap and tries to make his way back home to alert the president. Sox the Cat Rocks the Hill is a regular platform game. Sox has to make his way to the end of the stage all the while dealing with rats in trench coats, spies, spiders, the press, protesters, and even dogs. Along the way, there are bonus areas that you have to play by matching the correct years in office of various presidents. I guess given the fact that you're playing as a cat owned by a former president, it makes sense that the game would have political elements. However, I have one question. Why are there rats in trench coats that are as big as human beings? I mean, look at them. They're huge. Anyway, Sox can attack by swiping his paw. He can scratch. This is done by holding down on the controller and pressing Y. And he can collect balls of yarn that can be thrown at his opponents. Sox can also go into all fours, which allows him to run faster and jump higher than he normally would. This comes in handy when you need to go under certain objects. He can also grab onto ropes and glide. This allows him to reach higher areas. Sox starts out with 9 lives, which we all know what that's referencing. After enough hits, Sox dies. Fortunately, you find goldfish that replenish his health, milk that gives you more points, and a mouse 
that has the same properties as the star in Mario Brothers. At various points throughout the game, there will always be two paths that you can go through. It'll be up to you which path you choose to take. So, I make it to the end of the stage and it's time to fight the boss and... Wait a minute here. Is that... Ross Perot? Okay, can someone tell me why is Ross Perot, the guy who ran against Bill Clinton and then President George Bush Sr. in the 1992 presidential election, a boss character in this game? I mean, did Ross Perot hire all those spies to steal that portable nuclear unit? Apparently, all the bosses in this game are actual political figures that were active during the early 90s, when this game was made. I kid you not, we've got former presidents, like Gerald Ford, who tumbles around back and forth, which I believe is an innuendo to make fun of the fact that Gerald Ford fell down coming off of an airplane. Jimmy Carter, who shoots shiny stars from his mouth, referencing his million dollar toothy smile. Richard Nixon, who can make missiles rain down on you, which is a reference to Nixon ordering the bombing of Hanoi, Vietnam in 1972. Ronald Reagan, walking around as a zombie and being controlled by his wife Nancy. Not to mention his right hand man Oliver North, who attacks you with a fax machine, which I really don't know what that's alluding to. Now, I actually enjoy political satire as much as the next man, but I prefer it when it's balanced. These jokes seem to be leaning more towards the left. Every time you beat a boss, you get cutscenes of Sox getting the upper hand on his enemies. In this next stage, you're outside what seems to resemble a courthouse, so there's no surprise to see judges, the press, and... protesters? Yep. You see them picketing outside the courthouse, and they sometimes attack Sox whenever he gets near. And... Take a look at the protesters, very carefully. Doesn't their appearance look a tad... suspect? I mean... They look like hippies and women who... Uh... Seem to be playing for the other team, if you know what I mean. I guess the centrists who made this game did balance out their humor after all. Also, playing this game has triggered the realization that it takes one swipe to kill the humans, but it takes two swipes to kill the rats in trench coats. What's that all about? This next area, stage three, is where the game gets kind of hard, kind of fast. This appears to be a vault but you have acid flowing throughout the area. If Sox falls in, he gets hurt by it, but doesn't die, which helps out. You're jumping around money, using the conveyor belts, all the while dodging secret service agents and military dogs. When I got to this part here, I got confused. The blue block seems to be too far from that bridge to jump over successfully. At first, I thought I was lost, until I discovered that you have to jump off the block while being on all fours, and your jump has to be as precise as possible. So here I make it to the end, and... You have got to be kidding me. A donkey? I have to fight a donkey? Seems that way. The donkey being the official mascot of the Democrat Party. This sewer stage was frustrating. It seemed so big and vast that I ended up getting lost most of the time. And the end of this boss level? Yep, you guessed it right. An elephant, the official mascot of the GOP. Now that is hilarious. One thing I can say about playing the game up to this point is that the OST is rather lackluster. None of the songs sound even remotely good. They don't sound action packed. Not even the boss themes are cool. In this stage here, while jumping on the blocks, there seems to be some sort of glitch where Socks just get stuck in midair. I mean, what else can you call this? I'm technically not standing on the block, yet Socks is just standing there like he's floating or something. The final level is the Rose Garden, 
which is the garden right next to the White House planted in 1913 by Woodrow Wilson's wife, Ellen. This is, surprisingly, the easiest level in this game. I made it towards the end, so who's the last boss gonna be? So, who's responsible for stealing this portable nuclear unit and kidnapping Socks a cat? Besides a butt whooping, this guy's gonna do some serious jail time. George Bush Sr., the 41st President of the United States, is responsible for this whole debacle. He attacks by falling through the roof if you push him off the edge of the screen, and he also throws broccoli at you, which is kind of funny considering that George Bush Sr. long hated the taste of broccoli. The developers in this game are savages. Anywho, old Georgie boy doesn't present much of a challenge, so once you defeat him, Sox reunites with the Clintons, and he jams with them with saxophones, which Bill Clinton was an avid player of. And that was Sox a Cat Rocks the Hill, the unreleased Super Nintendo game played and reviewed by your Uncle Sledge 31 years later. Final thoughts about this game? The game's mediocre. Bye!